Greetings, salutations, respect, and love, fellow music lovers. I'm Scott from The Prog Corner, the new feature from The Fire Note. And this episode, we are going to be talking about another prog adjacent band and ranking their albums. Uh, today, we're talking about XTC, one of the greatest new wave bands of all time. They started in the mid 70s in Swindon, in England, uh, as a herky jerky kind of new wave band. They slowly morphed into something a whole lot more interesting. Uh, are they Prague? Probably not, but I think they are. I think they're very progressive, and we are going to rank all 14 XTC albums. Well, 12 XTC albums, two by the Dukes of Stratosphere, which was a very thinly veiled uh, disguise that those guys went into. Uh, but uh, we'll talk about all that in a little bit. We're going to start out with number 14 in our countdown. This comes to us from the year 2000, and it is their final album, Wasp Star. XTC at this point was uh, basically down to a two-piece. Dave Gregory had left. He was dissatisfied with the slow pace and uh, Andy's obsession with hiring a real orchestra on the previous album. He had had enough. He'd seen too much money go down the drain. He was he was done. So Wasp Star number fourteen. It's a good album, not a great album. Again, if this any band that has this as their worst album is a pretty damn good band. Alrighty, number thirteen. We were talking about the Dukes of Stratosphere. This was their second release, Sonic Sunspot. Um. It's not as good as the first one. The songs aren't. I, I know a lot of people like this. I, I like Kaleidoscope a lot. Uh, Little Lighthouse is great. But the uh, the 60s feel on this, the vintage instruments, the psychedelia. I mean, it's a cool record. Okay, next up. And number 12, it's The Big Express. This was the first album done without uh, any assistance from Terry Chambers at all. Uh, on this particular record, uh, who did they use on drums? They used Pete Phelps, I think, um, on drums on this one. Uh, it's, it's actually a really solid record. Next up, its predecessor, Mummer. It's a good album again. But coming on the heels of some really great albums, this one was a bit of a letdown. This is the one where Terry Chambers decided to leave halfway through. He's on three songs, and uh, the songwriting isn't quite as good as the albums that preceded it and uh, some of the ones that came after. This is like a little dead zone for XTC. They would get a whole lot better real, real quick, though. At number 10, their second album, Go To. I love this album cover. This is a record cover. <laughs> Very clever stuff. Uh, the herky-jerky new wave is going on here. Barry Andrews was still on uh, keyboards. He would leave after this and hook up with Robert Fripp and do some weird stuff with League of Gentlemen and Shriek Back and some other stuff. But uh, I really enjoy this album. It's got some terrific songs on it. Um, so that's my number 10. At number 9, the Gus Dungeon produced None Such. Gus obviously famous for his work with Elton John, and this is a very slick sounding record. There's some great pop tunes on here. The Ballad of Peter, Peter Pumpkinhead obviously comes to mind right away, but that wave is amazing. Then she appeared, War Dance, Wrapped in Grey. None such terrific record. They just reissued it on vinyl, so I'm really happy to have it back in the collection. Next up, that number eight, their debut album, White Music from 1978. This is a fun little record. It's got a lot of great herky-jerky, fast-paced, uh, interesting songs with a lot of dissonance between Andy Partridge's guitar and Barry Andrews' keyboards. They worked long hours trying to get these weird dissonant chords to mesh together um but it's it's fast paced the songs are great 
Uh, it includes Statue of Liberty, which is one of their biggest hits. Uh, this is Pop. I really adore this album. A lot of prog fans don't like early XTC. They like as they turned into a more Beatlesque kind of thing. I love the new wave stuff too. So that's number eight. At number seven is the first. The first album from the Dukes of Stratosphere, 25 o'clock. It's not really an album. It's six songs. It's an EP. Should I have included it? Well, six songs, probably not. I wasn't including any of the other EPs. I didn't include their first EP. So why include 25 o'clock? I don't know. I just did. At number six, Apple Venus. This thing is lush. It's orchestrated. It's got a lot of acoustic elements to it. The band had been silent for like seven or eight years. Uh, they were in some kind of legal battle with uh, their record label Virgin. Kind of was holding them hostage for a long time. Uh, they finally broke free from their contract and put out a masterpiece. This is an amazing album. Uh, I don't know how many bands have an album this good as their sixth best album. Apple Venus. Now we're getting into the really, really high quality stuff. At number five, Oranges and Lemons. This thing is possibly their most progressive album. You've got Pat uh, Masolato from King Crimson on drums. Uh, it's just got everything you want. Look at that psychedelic cover, kind of Beatles-esque, uh, Yellow Submarine kind of thing going on. But every song on here is great. And Colin Moulding's bass playing on this album is as good as anything I've ever heard. Everything he plays on that bass guitar is memorable. It's funky. It's exciting. It's fresh. This is a monster. I love this album. Woo! Yeah! Now I'm getting fired up. Top four time. The Todd Rundgren produced Skylarking. A lot of people's favorite XTC album. Um, I like it a lot. It's pastoral. It tells a song cycle. So it's kind of like a concept album. Rundgren and Partridge absolutely hated each other. They were button heads the whole time. But sometimes out of great tension, friction, and pressure comes greatness. And that's exactly what we got here. Skylarking. Now we got the big three. The big three. From 1982, the double album. Oh, I'm wearing the shirt. <laughs> yeah, English Settlement. Senses Working Overtime led this thing off as a single. It's possibly my favorite XTC track. Uh, they kind of dialed down the electric guitars here. Uh, the drums are still booming, but... They, they really made the guitars a little more jangly, a little more acoustic sounding, and therefore it's a little more pastoral, but the songwriting is tremendously good. This is the UK version. For some reason in the US, they released it as a single album, cutting out almost all my favorite songs on the album. It just, I, it made no sense. I was not happy in 1982 about that, so I had to get the uh, import. The final two, the last two. My two favorite XTC albums. At number two from 1980. It's Black Sea. This is their loudest album. It's their most, uh, probably their best produced. Steve Lillywhite did such an amazing job on here. Uh, he and Hugh Padgham, who produced English Settlement, uh, really instrumental in getting this uh, gated reverb drum sound. And... It kind of starts here, right? It kind of starts here. Not on Peter Gabriel 3, not on uh, Phil Collins in the air tonight. Uh, the production's amazing. These songs are great. Respectable Street, Generals and Majors, Tower of London, Travels in Neil. This is amazing album. But there can only be num one number one. And uh, for years and years and years, I've considered this one of the greatest achievements and recorded music ever and that is drums and wires when this thing came out in 1977 79 rather <laughs> i was living on a boat i was 16 about to turn 17 my dad would go 
stateside uh, for business once or twice a year. And he'd always come back with uh, a slew of cassettes for me. Uh, he'd just go in and talk to the clerks in the record store and say, hey, what's cool? My boy likes this, this, and this. And uh, he brought me a cassette of this, and I had never heard of them. I took one look at that album cover, and I'm like, oh, yeah, what is going on with this band? And every song on this album is amazing. Barry Andrews is gone at this point. They added David Gregory on guitar. What a weird thing to do in 1979. New Wave is just taking off. And, uh, you know, the keyboard stuff is just everywhere. So we're a New Wave band and our keyboard player quits. So let's hire a guitar player. And didn't make any sense at all. What a genius move. David Gregory is one of the finest guitar players to ever walk the planet. And what he did on this album with Andy and Colin's songs, just absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, I love XTC. I could make a case for any of those albums being... Uh, Number one on any given day, I may have a different order, but Drums and Wires will always be my number one. I mean, it's a top 10 album all time for me. And XTC is a top 10 band for me. Are they prog? I don't care. They're amazing. And I hope this uh, helped you sort out their discography a little bit. I hope maybe it gets you interested enough so that you investigate their music. But XTC is an amazing band. Highly recommended. That's my ranking. All 14 XTC albums from worst to best. I'm Scott from the Prague Corner. Peace out.